Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Bert Dixon here presenting on uh, section 11.2 in your Algebra 2 text that starts on page uh, 533. Uh, we're going to actually do some work on um, just on binder paper for the beginning. So you're going to need some paper as well as your book. And um, so I'm first before we get into doing some examples. I want to point out to you that on page 535 in your text is uh, where they define how rational exponents work. Now, you may have done some work already with rational exponents, like in Algebra 1. You've probably got some exposure to this. And if you're really comfortable with rational exponents, you might not need this um, video lesson, but it's here if you need it. Uh, so this first concept explains that when you have an exponent m over n, the m, the top, is the power, and the n, the denominator, is the root. Okay, so the top is the power, the, um, the bottom is the root. And so, for example, when you do 27 to the 2 thirds power, uh, the 2 is the exponent, so we're going to square it, and the um, 3 is the root. It doesn't matter which one you do first, but typically it's easier to take care of the root first because you end up with smaller numbers to work with. Where with this one, if you squared 27, you'd ha end up with a huge number that you might not be comfortable working with. Um, but if you do the cube root first, you end up with a smaller answer. So the 3 in the bottom means it's a cube root. So we're taking the cube root of 27, which is 3, and then we're squaring it, and you get 9. Okay? And um, so it's also written here algebraically, a to the m over n is equal to the nth root of a raised to the m power. That could also be written as the uh, a to the m power and the nth root. But as I said, we usually want to do it this way because then we get a smaller answer before we raise it to the exponent. Whereas if you do the exponent first, you're going to end up with a really big number in a lot of cases. And then they did another example with 4. So 4 to the 3 halves power, that means we're taking the square root of 4 because of the 2 in the bottom. And then we're going to cube the answer. And uh, they actually did the, the inside first with this one. They got 64. Um, they cubed 4 first and got 64, and then took the square root and got 8. Notice it gives you smaller numbers. If we take the square root of 4 first and then cube it, the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 cubed is 8. You get the same answer. It's just generally easier to do the root first. And so there's a couple examples here on this page 535. Um, negative 125 to the four-thirds power. So we want to take the cube root of negative 125, which is negative 5, and then raise it to the fourth power, and that is 625. And um, for example, B, you're just rewriting this in radical form. And uh, this one, uh, we can't take the uh, we can't really do anything to simplify this one. We're just rewriting it using radical, using uh, rational exponents. Remember, rational means fraction. So, um, taking it in radical form and writing it in rational exponent form. Okay, same with this one. Um, that's in radical form. We're writing it in exponent form. Okay, example B. Um, here we're, we're taking this fraction, 81 over 16, and raising it to the 3 fourths power. So that means we're going to take the fourth root of 81 over 16 and cubing it. And so the fourth root of 81 is 3, and the fourth root of 16 is 2. So we have 3 halves raised to the third power, which is 27 over 8 for our final answer. Uh, example B, uh, again, we're just taking it in rational exponent form and rewriting it in root form. So that's the third root of xy to the fifth power, or the cube root of xy, the whole quantity, to the fifth power. It's the same either way. Um, 11 can't be broken down, so we have 11 to the uh, 6 over 3. So sixth power, third root, and that fraction actually simplifies to just two, <clears throat> so that's 121. And then with the variables involved, 
um, here we would have uh, the third root and the fifth power. So that's going to be to the five thirds power. And there's nothing else we can do with that. Okay, so um, now we're going to go to binder paper and work out some more examples before we go back to the book. And so I have some examples here. Um, we could write this um, in exponent form. That would be negative 1 to the 1 fourth power. There's nothing we can really do with that. It's undefined in both cases because um, there is no number we can raise to an even power to get a negative answer. So that, that is undefined. We can't take the fourth root or the square root or the sixth root of a negative number. So that one's undefined. Um, this example L, um, there are no parentheses here, but if you, if you follow the order of operations, the exponent comes before multiplying by negative one. So just think of that as negative one. Think of it this way, negative one times 27 to the negative four thirds power. And so um, you may remember from algebra one, a negative exponent means it belongs in the denominator. So we have negative one, and then this is going to be 27 to the 4 thirds power in the denominator. So a negative exponent means that part that's raised to the negative exponent belongs in the bottom. And now we can simplify that. That's the cube root of 27 raised to the fourth power. Cube root of 27 is 3. When we raise it to the fourth power, we get negative 1 over 81. Go ahead and try problem H on your own. So this would be 16. I'll take the fourth root of that and then cube it. So that's going to be 2 cubed is 8. Pause your video and try problem M. So 1 half power is just a square root. So we have the square root of 49 over 100. We take a square root of 49 and get 7. Take the square root of 100 and get 10. OK, um, pause your video again. This time we'll try all three of these. Pause your video and press play when you're ready to see the solutions. Uh, so problem i, again, we have a negative exponent. So that's the same as 1 over 16 to the 3 fourths. And so then that is 1 over the fourth root of 16 cubed. The fourth root of 16 is 2. So we have 1 over 2 cubed or 1 8. Problem j, remember, uh, we want to write that as negative 1 times 16 to the 3 fourths. And so that is negative 1 times the fourth root of 16 cubed. And that is, uh, let's see, negative 1 times the fourth root of 16 is 2 cubed. And so we get negative 8 as our answer. And for n, this is, um, now you could write it like this, 1 over 49 hundredths to the positive one half, or it would also work and when you have a negative exponent for a fraction, it actually works to flip it and write it as a positive exponent. So I'll show that both of these turn out with the same answer. So uh, this one would be one over seven tenths and dividing by seven tenths is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So you get 10 sevenths. Uh, whereas if you do this one, the square root of 100 is 10 and the square root of 49 is seven. So either way that you do it, you get 10 sevenths as your answer. Okay, um, there's two more to try. So pause your video again and try the last two problems, K and O. Okay, for K, we have, um, this time the negative 16 is in parentheses, so we have negative 16 
we're going to take the fourth root of that and then cube it. And we can't take the fourth root of a negative number, so there is no solution to this one, or uh, we would say undefined. We can't take an, cannot take an even root of a negative number. We could take a cube root of a negative number. For example, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. It works for an odd root, but not for an even root. We can't take an even root of a negative number. Uh, and then O, remember we can flip this upside down and change it to a positive 3 halves. So then that's going to be the square root of 9 hundredths cubed. Um, so that's 3 tenths cubed, which is 27 over 1,000 for our final answer. Okay, uh, so there are a couple more problems in the textbook. Go to page 536. And on page 536, these ones have... Um, some different variations, some with variables, and uh, example A with some bigger numbers. So um, go ahead and pause your video and try problem A. All right, so for problem 5A, we can rewrite this as the fifth root of negative... 32 over 243, and then we'll square it. So the 5 in the bottom is the root, so it's a fifth root. The 2 in the top means we're going to square it. And so the uh, fifth root of negative 32 would be negative 2. And the fifth root of 243 is 3. And then we're going to square that. And that is four ninths. So four over 49. Uh, example B, uh, there's nothing we can do to really simplify it, but it does say in the directions to translate the expressions, um, the radical expressions into exponents or vice versa. So this one has rational exponents. So to write it in radical form, we would just write the c root of 3y to the b power. It would also be correct to write it as 3y to the b power and then take the c root of that. So either one of these answers would be correct. Okay, uh, pause your video and try problems c and d. C, we can write this as 0.5 raised to the 9 thirds power, which is 0.5 to the third, and that is 0.125. Or um, if you change the 0.5 to a fraction 1 half, 1 half to the third power is 1 eighth. So either answer would be correct. 1 eighth is exactly the same as 0.125. And then the last one, um, we're just writing it in rational exponent form. So this would be the quantity st raised to the z over u. The power goes in the top, the root goes in the bottom. And that's all you can do with that one. So that's it for this lesson, pretty short lesson. And um, so you're ready to go ahead and try the homework now for section 11.1. .1. Have a great day.